librarian on the roof. In Lockhart, Texas, stood an old, old library, the oldest in the whole state. A hundred years ago, everyone in town visited the Dr. Eugene Clark Library to check out good books and the latest news. Crowds came to hear bands play and school children sing in front of its giant stained glass window. But over the years, the books grew old and dusty, and people found newer, flashier places to go, and the library grew quiet. One day, its creaky doors whooshed open. Good morning! Rosalita Laurel, the new librarian, arrived with a clatter of heels on the floor and eyelashes as long as bird feathers. Her laugh rattled the stained glass. Shh! whispered a library worker. Don't disturb the readers! Horse feathers! What readers? Rosalita did not whisper. The staff looked around, but couldn't find a reader anywhere. After Rosalita arrived, the Eugene Clark began to change. New books and magazines arrived. She told funny stories that made the staff laugh. The library was no longer quiet. Everyone should love coming to the library, said Rosalita. The rich, the poor, the farmers, the townsfolk. We're here for grown-ups and for children. And by the way, where are the children? No one knew. That year, Rosalita planned a Christmas party for the whole town. Wearing the largest hat anyone had ever seen, she led the parade around the square. What's on your hat? a little girl asked. My pet doves, Rosalita said. Come visit them in the library. But after the party, the children still didn't come. The library's for grown-ups, they said. The children need a place in our library just for them. Rosalita told her staff. We need more books, picture books, mystery books, adventure books. We need tables just the right size, comfy chairs, colorful artwork, and computers. Lots of families around here can't afford computers. Well, where will we get the money? The others asked. I'll write letters and ask for donations, said Rosalita. Well, Rosalita wrote plenty of letters to big businesses and important people, but no one sent any money. We could have a bake sale, someone suggested. We need $20,000, and we won't get it selling cookies, said Rosalita. We need the whole town involved. Here's my plan, but I'll need your help. Rosalita packed essentials, which included a tent, a bullhorn, a laptop, two cell phones, and a slingshot. On Monday morning, the staff stood outside around Rosalita. Be safe, Rosalita. We'll send you anything you need, they promised. And when people in the street heard where she was going, they had questions. How will she sleep? What will she eat? I want what I want to know, exclaimed one little boy, is how is she going to go to the bathroom? Rosalita turned him without batting an eyelash. Librarians are very resourceful people, she replied. Then Rosalita stepped into the bucket of the electric company truck. Up, 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 50 feet up. She stepped out of the bucket and onto the roof. A city official came by, startled to find the town librarian on the roof. He shouted, Miss Laurel, we pay you to be inside the library, not on top of it. What are you doing? She pulled out her bullhorn and addressed the gathering crowd. I will stay on this roof until we have raised enough money for our children's section. News spread, and after school, the children came to see Rosalita perched there. The other librarians never camped on their roof, they said. Rosalita launched water balloons with her slingshot while the children danced and played all afternoon on the library steps. And in the evening, she blew them kisses and disappeared inside the tent. When the staff returned on Tuesday morning, Rosalita already sat outside working on her reports. 
They put her breakfast in a bucket, and she pulled it up, 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 50 feet up. She ate blueberry muffins while the birds sang in the treetops below. The town official came by again. Rosalita, stop this nonsense right now. We are a respectable town. We simply cannot have librarians falling off of the roof. Horse feathers. Respectable towns have libraries filled with children. Rosalita didn't budge. The high school band played and the cheerleaders cheered. Visitors and reporters arrived from everywhere to see Lockhart's daring librarian. The storekeepers and the hotel owners came to thank Rosalita for bringing them business. And they all left donations. The school children sent a pickup truck overflowing with coins that they had collected for their library. On Wednesday, an employee called Rosalita's cell phone. We just got a check for $10,000. Won't you come down now? $10,000 is a lot of money, but it's not enough, said Rosalita. I never do anything halfway. On Thursday, the sky clouded over and rain began to fall. Rosalita grew cold and wet, but she refused to leave the roof. And on Friday, it poured down harder. The wind tugged the tent lines, and the library staff started to worry. They slashed out the door and stood in puddles up to their shins. Please come down, they begged. It's getting worse. Rosalita shook her head and crawled back inside her tent. Saturday afternoon, the sky turned green and the wind shifted. The news stations warned of tornadoes. The whole town of Lockhart feared for their beloved librarian. All night long, great gusts blasted across the roof. Rosalita held on to the slippery rail with all of her might. On Sunday morning, after the storm, everyone rushed outside. Rosalita, are you still up there? Of course, she said. A librarian always stays on top of things. You did it, someone yelled. We have over $39,000, all for the children's area of our library. The crowd cheered for Rosalita. Rosalita climbed into the electric company bucket. Her clothes dripped and her eyelashes drooped, but she smiled at all who greeted her on the way back down. You mean we did it! She said, the whole town together. Today, if you look through the front window of the Eugene Clark Library, you will see shelves stacked full with children's books and tables and chairs just the right size. And you'll see artwork on the walls and a row of busy computers. And best of all, you will always find crowds of children who love to read and learn inside the walls of the oldest library in Texas.